So this starts with the assisted model, which is where, that's where people open cases. The funnel represents the support center. It's often level one, level two, level three. Um, it's a tiered support model. And there's all kinds of knowledge available to help the people in the funnel answer those issues. Then we also have commutes and social. We have self-service and then the ultimate automation with detect or predict. Customers or employees are trying to pursue resolutions to issues through every one of these channels. Now, historically, support organizations are really focused just on the funnel and their view of the customer experience and the demand for support was based on how many cases were open. But what we're finding is there's a lot of activity, especially in external facing organizations in communities and social, there's a huge opportunity to deliver this through self-service and then in the future doing the automation detect and predict. And so one dynamic here is that as we expand our focus, the traditional focus of support, which was here, the assisted model in the funnel, to include the activity that our, the people we support are engaged in, in um, community social self-service and ultimately automation. What we're really looking at is moving the customer effort from something that's very high, because opening a case is not all that much fun from an experience point of view, it's often quite frustrating. But finding an answer in self-service is actually, in, if you do it well, is a better experience and less customer effort. Um, so there's this concept of customer effort moving from a high effort uh, kind of activity to a lower effort activity. So, so one of the things we're seeing that this, the reason why all these clouds overlap is that today, Self-service most often is a portal. It's some, you have to go somewhere else to find the answer from the environment in which you might be do, get doing your work. What we're seeing is a lot of investment on the part of the members to integrate self-service into the user interface for the application. So rather than going somewhere else to find the answer, you actually can find what you need without leaving your workspace or your work environment or the user interface for what you're trying to do. So that starts to move us towards a little further left that's, that reduces the effort. And then doing clickstream analysis and, and behavioral um, patterns that indicate some level of frustration or an issue and providing a response before they ask. That's the detect and predict. And I think that, that work right now is, um, it's very new and you know Microsoft tried it years ago with the paperclip <laughs> and everybody hated the paperclip uh, because it wasn't relevant uh, it was more annoying than it was helpful and so the trick here is that the user experience feels it's helpful it's appropriate it's timely it's relevant that's easy to say hard to do so these um, demand uh, models <clears throat> that we've been working on. We've been collecting data from a, a number of different members, um, some in very high-tech environments, some in low-tech environments, some with huge install bases, some with small install bases. And what's interesting is that whatever your volume is in cases that come in in the assisted model, the opportunity to do to solve issues in communities and social is 30 times that, and the opportunity in self-service is 10 times whatever that assisted vo volume is. So the, the data that we've seen, and this, is, this data is actually external uh, for customer-facing kind of environments, is that you know, these ratios are actually pretty consistent. This 10x factor says, you know, if we use an example that we're getting 10,000 cases coming into the assisted model in a month about in a certain product area or domain, then there's an opportunity to answer 30, 300,000 in communities and 100,000 in self-service for a total of 410,000, which means that the 10,000 that are coming into the assisted model is less than 3% of the total customer demand. Now for 
most organizations, when they first see this, they reject it immediately because what they're used to seeing is 10,000 a month. That's the demand. That's, that's how many cases are open. That's how often customers have issues or that's how often employees have issues. And yet when we think about our own experience, you know, how often have any of us encountered problems with Microsoft Office? Do we ever call the help desk or do we ever call Microsoft? I never have. I, <laughs> and so we encounter lots and lots of things that in, disrupt our productivity that we either talk to our peers, we'll do, you know, Google has become the global support portal for everything in terms of self-service. Um, we Google it or, and sometimes we give up. Sometimes we do something else or find another way to get it done rather than actually resolving the problem. So the realization that there are a lot more issues out there than what we see in the assisted model is, you know, the key point here. And everyone who has challenged this has gone off and done some research and discovered that their data in terms of activity, particularly it between the assisted model and self-service, actually reinforces these ratios. So huge opportunity, again, if we go back to definition of service excellence, which is maximize customer realized value, and to do that with the least amount of effort, both for us, which is the cost factor, and for the employee, self-service is a huge opportunity if, they, if we can enable it in a way where they can find answers faster than they can open a case, that's when self-service activity goes through the roof. When it's less effort to self-serve rather than to call the support center. So this, in the, in the high tech industry anyway, there's a concept of shift left, and that's you know, this whole idea of these two models where we really want to shift as much of the user activity, as much as the employee activity, to be lower effort for them, lower cost for us, and high, high success. And so that's the shift left concept. The value erosion uh, model, the demand model, together, have really, I think, changed the view um, that the executives of the member companies have about the business they're in. So there's been, and I'd say in the last 10 years, there's been quite a shift in the mindset of support executives, at least the ones that we interact with, from looking at support as a transaction-based model where my job is to answer cases or solve cases to this much broader perspective that support is really a network and we really want to connect you know, people with content if it's known, and we want to connect people to people if it's new. And that's a very different mental uh, model um, from a tiered level one, level two, level three, all we do is solve cases. So in KCS does a lot to en enable this because it's all, all of these things are driven by having a good knowledge base. So the role of support changes from you know, just focusing on cases and, and becomes resolution experts for new, because really what we're gonna use our support staff for is answering issues that are new, not stuff we've already answered. And we wanna facilitate this network. And knowledge is the enabler and customer success is the goal. So rather than a funnel, this is our new icon for what support looks like. It's actually a network. And then a couple of uh, key points that come out of this one is that the value support creates cannot be measured inside of support. So if we're doing root cause analysis and driving corrective action in the business to remove the cause of an issue, that's huge in terms of employee productivity, in terms of reducing our cost in support. And that, so measuring that improvement in employee productivity is, is a difficult thing to do. It's a, it's a difficult thing to articulate. And that a lot of the support experience is indirect. It's, it's through self-service, it's um, in communities. Um, the cases represent a very small percentage of the actual user experience or employee experience. 